What's going on everyone, Tech Me Out here, and in this video, we are gonna be taking a look at a few of my favorite accessories for the Sony a7 III. So on my channel, I primarily have been shooting with the Sony a6300 and the Sony a6500, which are both great cameras, love them. They have gotten the job done. I really don't have any complaints about them, but I really wanted to step into the world of a full frame camera. So I decided to pull the plug on the Sony a7 III and uh, I have been super satisfied. And I feel like in it being such a new camera, something I struggled a little bit in finding were a few accessories. So I figured I'd make a video on the accessories I picked up for it. So the first thing I had to grab was a camera cage. And the one in which I'm using is by a company known as Nicey Rig. Um, I was debating between that and the small rig option and I chose this one because of the price and it also came with a clamp included for your HDMI cord as I have gone through so many of those on my Sony a6500. So when I realized that you could get that on top of the cage for less than the small rig cage, in addition to the way that it looks, I chose this one. I also like the fact that you can kind of further customize how it works. So if you notice here, it has these little screws. And if I were to undo these screws here, it would allow me then to have this piece missing on the cage and then just this piece connected to the cage. Or maybe I don't want the top bracket here. I can just have the side brackets on because these screws will basically allow me to break the cage apart and use the components in which I need. So I really like that about it. So I could actually customize which parts of the cage I'm gonna use in general. Another thing that this cage had was the little piece here, which I don't know the name of off the top of my head, but it came with this little circular piece here already on the cage. So all I had to do was buy the wooden handle, which is what I did next. So um, I forgot the name, I can't think of what it's called. I'm gonna throw it up in the video, but when it had that there, it basically saved me as I didn't have to purchase anything else to get the wooden handle connected to this. So those are a few reasons in why I chose this. It just came with a lot of things that I felt like I would need and normally would probably have to pay extra for down the road. It came with it included. But I will say, um, I've always debated getting a wooden handle, but I'm like, does it really make that much of a difference? I felt comfortable and fine kind of holding my camera on the left and right side to record. But this little wooden handle right here makes a huge difference in terms of comfort. It gives you a much more steady shot as you have a more secure hold on the camera in itself. So I'm so glad that I chose to get this. It's super comfortable. And I'm actually thinking about buying another one for the other side because it just kind of feels like it should be there. But I don't really want an extremely big setup, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and probably pull the plug on it. Oh, before I forget, I know something else that always concerns me when I get camera cages is access to ports. You can still get to everything just fine. So you can get to your battery pack down here without any issues. So I can pop that battery out and it's not gonna bump into anything. You can still get to your SD cards here. So that's not being blocked at all. You can also still get to your buttons here, your custom buttons. That's not a problem getting to those. And you can still get to your ports and things over here on this side as well. So everything is still very accessible. So camera cage, wooden handle. Another accessory that I bought was this top handle here. And this top handle is actually from um, small rig. So I did mix up some pieces but this also aids in having a more secure grip. So either when I'm recording or I'm grabbing this off of my monopod, it makes it a little bit easier to just handle in general. And I really like the fact that it truly accommodates when I wanna get those low angled shots. You know, it's a lot easier now to just kind of point the camera downward and then just pan left or right or do whatever I need to versus holding it as such and trying to do so. It just makes it a little bit easier. So something else I purchased was this additional cold shoe mount. I believe that's what it's called. <laughs> but this is gonna allow me to connect other things up here via a hot shoe mount. I think I'm using these terms right. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to get this was because I like to connect things like my monitor and also my microphone. But I switch back and forth between a couple of microphones. However, one in which I record with a lot is the Sennheiser microphone in which I put the receiver here. And of course I wear the lav mic on me. So that sits here. However, if I'm gonna be a bit more run and gun, then I will use the Sennheiser MKE 440 here and I will mount it up here instead. These are the two mic setups that I typically use. The battery on this is phenomenal. The only thing I don't like is that you do have to remember to turn it on and off. But however, even in those scenarios where I have forgotten to turn this off, 
the battery has like fared just fine. Like I probably haven't changed this battery in weeks. But yeah, it's an overall solid microphone in terms of quality and battery life. You have a few additional buttons over here on the side to further customize the gain and things like that for the microphone itself. Now another accessory which is not shown that I use up here is my small HD 501 monitor. I sit that up here and that is pretty much my setup. That's what I'm using for the Sony a7 III in terms of accessories in reference to the rig. Now another accessory in which you're gonna need are SD cards. And I actually have two SanDisk 128 gigabyte options here. These are their Extreme Pro SD cards and I like them. They have served me well. I primarily do shoot video, but even in those instances where I have shot photos, it's fared well when I do my little burst series. It's just after I capture the photos, it has to buffer a little bit in order for me to actually view them when I do decide to do like a burst series of pictures. But yeah, no issues there. Um, I went with the 128 gigabyte option simply because I don't want to have to worry about storage. And generally I'll say when I'm shooting 4K up here and the card is empty, it gives me about two hours and some change roughly of recording time, which is well over what I need. So I don't have to worry about that. Now the last accessory that I want to recommend, and it's not even really needed because anyway, whatever, I'll tell you what it is. It's uh, third party batteries. Now I will say I did hear the battery on the Sony a7 III is like significantly better than you know its predecessors. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. But when I got it, it is like night and day. When I would shoot with my Sony a6500, like I was going through batteries. I actually have a basket of batteries. I have like 15 batteries and I could easily go through those when I'm shooting a video. I can go through like two or three. Sometimes barely gave me like an hour of recording time when I shot in 4K, but these, man, I shot, I actually shot a video and even left the camera on multiple times and it lasted the entire shoot. So one of these batteries served the purpose of what I was using three to four batteries on my Sony a6500. The reason I say that you should pick this up is because one, with the Sony a7 III, it does not include a charging cradle. So you basically have to plug the camera in to charge the battery. Not really the most conducive setup. So what I've done is I've gotten some extra batteries so that while one is being used, the others can be charging. And um, this actually has an integrated USB cable in here so that you don't per se need a cable while you're out on the go to charge it. And I went with the third party option because the price of this with two batteries was the price of one Sony battery, basically. Definitely worth your money to get this. And I haven't had any issues thus far. You also have a little LCD panel here, which is gonna give you the readout of your battery life on your batteries that you have. So yeah, it's been a pretty solid option thus far. Three batteries, I feel, are like more than enough. Like, you should be fine with this. I don't feel the need to get any more right now. I also grabbed some glass screen protectors because you definitely wanna keep this big, beautiful screen nice and clean but um i want to say that was everything thus far that i've grabbed for it now another accessory in which i want to mention that i don't know how i possibly managed to forget is this sony remote so this thing right here has become like my new best friend especially when i'm shooting alone as it has saved me a ton of time for things that i would normally have to get up and go do behind the camera i can now do from sitting in front of the camera with this remote so i can do things like start and stop my recording right from here i can also adjust the shutter speed the timer i can zoom in and out using this remote so zooming in zooming out. I can do that all from right here. I can also instantly review the footage in which I have taken and that has been a huge plus because there are times where I'm questioning the angle that I'm shooting from and I don't want to get up to get behind the camera and review the footage. I'd rather be able to just look at the monitor and do so right from where I'm sitting and normally when I have somebody recording me I'm able to you know to ask them to play it back but with this, I can just press the playback button and then use the arrow keys to play it and all those other things without ever having to get up. It's super clutch. I can also access my menu from here. I can delete footage from here when I'm in that playback mode or whatever my custom key is for the trash can. It will do that instead. And then these arrow keys. So on my Sony a7 III, I have configured things such as hitting the right side will adjust my ISO, the left side will do something else, hitting the up button will do something else and so on. So when I'm sitting here, if I hit this right button here, 
I can actually use the up and down keys to then adjust my ISO. So I can do that all from right here without ever having to get up and get out of focus. The other thing in which I really love about this is that I can turn on and off my autofocus or my manual focus option. So now I can get in frame. If I don't want it to possibly lose focus on me, I can hit that button there and then it will turn off autofocus and I am in focus. So that has been super handy. But yeah, there's just so much more to talk about this remote, more than I can cover in a video. But if you shoot alone, this is a must have accessory. I promise you you will get your money's worth and it pairs through infrared so you don't have to connect via Bluetooth or anything like that. It will instantly work as soon as you turn on the remote option within the settings on your camera. So I use this with my Sony a7 III and my Sony a6500. It does have a list of cameras in which it will work with so definitely check that out before you purchase this as I do want to make sure before you do that it will work with the camera in which you're using. And of course this will be linked down below for you. This has alleviated so much frustration that I sometimes experience when recording alone. But um... I want to say that was everything thus far that I've grabbed for it and that I would recommend you grab for yours. But if I think of anything else, I'll drop it down below in the description box and you be sure to do the same thing as well in the comment section because I'm interested to see and hear what you feel some recommended accessories might be for the Sony a7 III. That's going to conclude this video and as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.